first, let me ask you this. A day and a half, no verdict yet. I've heard you say, I've heard a lot of people say this should have been a very quick verdict, and a lot of people thought it would be a guilty verdict. As a prosecutor, what does this tell you now? If this were your case, would you be nervous? Well, I wouldn't be quite nervous yet because remember, this is a first degree murder case. There are five counts, 41 pages of jury instructions. This jury certainly has a lot to do, but this is a very strong case by the prosecution. If you go back to the Zimmerman case, the jury deliberated for over 16 hours for two days. This jury is not there yet. This jury has only been out for about 10 hours. But I agree, John, the question on everyone's mind is what is taking them so long? But you've got to remember, Michael Dunn did take the witness stand, and um, I sort of think that what they're doing is taking apart his testimony. If there are a few jurors that find him credible, then the other jurors are going to walk through all of the evidence to find the discrepancies. I think that's why they asked for the uh, the gray mannequin that shows the, the bullet uh, hole trajectories. I think that's why they're asking for an easel so that they can sort of take their notes, take their votes. I think that's why they're asking for the letter that Michael Dunn wrote to his family, which would show some inconsistencies. I, I, I think I think they're just doing some some hard work. I would be surprised, however, if they didn't come down with the verdict tomorrow. It is Friday. Most juries do not go into the weekend, especially when they're sequestered. Friday is generally verdict day. Martin, uh, Sonny brought up these pieces of evidence that the jury asked to see. Specifically, the last thing was that letter that Martin Dunn wrote himself. Explain to us the significance of that letter. Yeah, this letter they had, what they wanted to know was what was the date when this letter was written and it was told to them that it was written last June. This letter is, according to Michael Dunn, by his own words, an accurate account, one he dictated to a family member, of what actually happened on November 23rd, uh, that is, on the night that he killed Jordan Davis. And yet, when he got on the witness stand, he appeared to tell a different version of the same event, which is why that letter was actually introduced by the prosecution and why they wanted to point out, well, wait a minute, in the letter you say that Jordan Davis was diving back into the SUV, and yet on the stand you're saying that he was coming at you from the SUV when you fired. Which is it? It was clear they were trying to impeach his testimony on the stand. In the surveillance video they asked to see, it's longer than the one that was actually played in court. What does that tell you, Martin? Well, a couple of things. I mean, it's 10 minutes before that they didn't show, and it's supposedly about 10 minutes after that they didn't show, and there's six different camera angles. Regardless of how much you look at it, there is no camera that captured the actual the event outside, outside in the gas station outdoors. However, what the defense is trying to say is that what is key for the jurors to hear is what did witnesses say immediately after? And they say the prosecution stopped the tape before they could hear that. The defense is trying to imply that maybe witnesses said something in the oh my gosh moment of did you see that young man had a shotgun or did you see this or that something that would verify the account that Michael Dunn gave.